Uh, well, my colleague Frank Fukuyama has already welcomed you, but uh, I will also do the same. I want to uh, thank uh, Celine Asaf Bustani uh, and the Human Rights Foundation for honoring uh, Stanford University and the Freeman Spogli Institute for International Studies by allowing us to uh, host uh, the College Freedom Forum. I uh, very much want to thank and honor our two previous speakers, um, uh, Jura Ilham. Uh, we remember your father, Ilham Todi. Uh, we pray for him. We've not forgotten him. Uh, he's a human rights hero. Uh, and um, the world needs to uh, do everything possible to demand uh, his release uh, from the neo-totalitarian regime, which is the People's Republic of China, and I'll come back to that. Uh, everything we're talking about here, uh, if you look at the map, uh, Xinjiang Autonomous Region, uh, North Korea, Tibet, which I will come to uh, in having the honor of, um, of preceding the great individual we're about to hear from uh, who led the government in exile in Tibet for uh, a decade. Uh, and uh, Vietnam as well, it all circles around the People's Republic of China. Uh, let me begin by saying it's very important for us to understand what the People's Republic of China is and is not. We had hoped uh, when we admitted uh, China to the WTO a little over 20 years ago uh, that it would embark upon a path of, in a way, liberalization uh, and that by being integrated into the world trading system the same world trading system that you uh, have heard uh, Jur Ilham describe China's abuses of, uh, that it would become what uh, the former Deputy Secretary of State Robert Zellick called a responsible stakeholder in world affairs, and that gradually it would become less repressive, more pluralistic, more open, and so on. Uh, China has not evolved in that direction. Uh, under Xi Jinping, it has become a neo-totalitarian state. It's become more repressive, more controlling. Uh, and if you want to see the future that the Chinese Communist Party state has in mind for the country, it's worth paying close attention to what's going on in the Uyghur region, because that is where they have been rolling out the social credit system of trying to aggregate all of people's data and information into a single integrated system that would understand every uh, social media post uh, that they are posting, uh, every expenditure they have, in a uh, monetary system that has now gone cashless and relies on a central bank digital currency, uh, that uh, every transaction of which can be monitored, uh, every social interaction, every movement with the Orwellian presence of surveillance cameras. Uh, and this is, <laughs> this is the future of China uh, if we don't stand up uh, and pressure uh, for change. Uh, moreover, if you watch what China is doing now throughout the region, uh, not just in its pressure on uh, Taiwan, one of the most liberal democracies in Asia, uh, but its uh, effort to command uh, and appropriate all of the resources uh, and maritime uh, trade units, uh, uh, trade passageways in the South China Sea, you see uh, the increasing danger of um, aggression uh, and of China's effort to dominate uh, and be a hegemonic power through the entire Indo-Pacific region. Uh, this is why the Philippines now, under um, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., uh, is building up uh, its navy and uh, coastal defenses and turning to the United States after a period 
when the Philippines turned away from the United States uh, and to uh, Korea and Japan and other countries uh, for mutual defense against the rising uh, authoritarian threat. Uh, and no country, no people uh, faces a greater danger than Taiwan. Uh, the uh, Chinese Communist uh, leadership under Xi Jinping has made it clear uh, that they think uh, Taiwan is not only a part of China, but is a part of the People's Republic of China, the neo-totalitarian state that is ruled by the Chinese Communist Party, and that uh, if reunification, in their terms, cannot be achieved by peaceful means, then uh, it should be compelled by force. Today, um, the People's Republic of China is increasing its military expenditures and the expansion of its military forces, particularly uh, the People's Liberation Army Navy, at a faster rate than any country in the world. Uh, it's the second largest spender in the world uh, on um, military, it's expanding its nuclear forces, uh, and it's increasingly intimidating a peaceful island, the Republic of China, Taiwan, that simply wants to be um, left to enjoy its democracy and its freedom, at least until such time uh, as maybe democracy would uh, descend on the Chinese mainland and the controversy across the strait could be uh, resolved by peaceful means. I want to say a couple things more about um, the region. Um, I have had the rather uh, odd and unlikely privilege of visiting Tibet uh, uh, and um, uh, seeing uh, what uh, the Communist Chinese Party state has done to one of the most um, formidably beautiful and precious uh, environmental and cultural sites in the world. Uh, I have never had in all my travels to more than 70 countries a more shocking and depressing experience than seeing, um, first of all, the palpable fear. Of course, I haven't been to the Uyghur region or I probably would have seen it there. The pervasive fear uh, that the Chinese Communist Party state has implanted uh, in Tibet by banning any display or sign of devotion to Tibetan Buddhist religion, uh, to the Dalai Lama, or um, uh, to the principles of the Tibet, Democrat, increasingly democratic principles of the Tibetan uh, government in exile. This is, at a minimum, cultural genocide. It's a very deliberate effort to eliminate the culture of a beautiful and very distinctive people. Uh, and it has also involved um, massive, shocking, horrifying, physical desecration uh, of the uh, uh, structures uh, of Tibetan Buddhism uh, and of this beautiful landscape that's been paved over uh, by Stalinist architecture uh, and that is being resettled um, uh, by uh, Han Chinese immigrants in a deliberate effort to erase the independent uh, identity and cultural heritage of the Tibetan people. I might add, with respect to Vietnam, because I know we're going to have a wonderful performance soon, uh, that we'd hope Vietnam as well would move in a more uh, democratic uh, direction. Uh, it isn't as wealthy as China. It isn't as um, uh, far along in modernization. Uh, but there again, uh, you have a Communist Party leadership that is desperately afraid that its people, particularly its young people, once they get more access to information, uh, more awareness of the outside world, will want what people everywhere want, freedom and human dignity. Uh, and so in Vietnam as well, uh, freedom is moving in the other direction, in the wrong direction, in the direction of closure, 
suppression uh, and paranoia by a uh, regime that is threatened by nothing more profoundly than the free flows of information. And so I'll conclude uh, by a, a personal reflection on what you just uh, heard uh, from our very brave uh, speaker, uh, Unhe Park. And uh, let me say I've, uh, I've had the privilege uh, over three decades of interviewing some of your fellow escapees. I don't think that there is any more repressed country in the world than North Korea. I refer to it as um, one giant concentration camp uh, and a, uh, a repressive criminal gang masquerading as a state. This state is an enormous uh, danger to world peace, not only because of its accumulation uh, of nuclear weapons and its nuclear threats, but I think you now know uh, of the unholy alliance that's been reached between Russia and North Korea that is trying to bail out uh, Vladimir Putin's uh, a, a war of aggression in Ukraine by providing uh, Russia with some of the uh, artillery uh, shells and uh, other military supplies it needs to sustain this campaign. And of course, you can imagine what's flowing technologically and otherwise in the other direction to help um, sustain the North Korean regime. Uh, during uh, the administration of George W. Bush, the words regime change uh, were given a very uh, negative and uh, aggressive uh, color uh, and I understand it, I was in Iraq, uh, I think it was a very ill-considered uh, military intervention. Uh, but um, regime change is what is needed uh, to secure human rights uh, and human dignity in all of the places I've talked about. And we're not talking about regime change by military force or military subversion. Uh, or uh, any of the other means that they would like to use against free societies, uh, including Ukraine and Taiwan. Uh, there's nothing uh, that would be more subversive of these neo-totalitarian regimes and more facilitating of their transformation to human rights respecting societies than the promotion of free flows of information and ideas. You saw one in those thumb drives. I can tell you without being able to talk about it in detail, there are some other extremely exciting, uh, technologically sophisticated um, innovations that are going on now to uh, break the great firewalls that surround these countries and free these people's minds, because once they do that, they will free their systems. Uh, and it's my great honor now to turn it over to Lobsang Sangay.